हेलो हेलो यस हेलो सामी हाउ आर यू हाय सिपी आई एम गुड हाउ आर यू आई एम फाइन सो व्हाट डू यू लाइक टू शेयर विद अस सामी आर यू आर अ मुस्लिम राइट या आई एम अ मुस्लिम एक्चुअली सॉरी आई um was inside and uh, for uh, attending your call i have to come out because my husband is in the home <laughs> why you why you don't let your husband join or join us in the conversation so we can have a, like a good a good uh, family conversation i know but he doesn't know about you and uh, um so uh, he I will don't. be okay he will be <laughs> upset he will be upset if you speak to me kind of he will be kind of upset because he wants to know then uh, then he will be upset oh why i'm talking somebody who can tell me some truth about my religion you know yeah so what do you think about islam samia because I, i i saw your text many time in the chat uh it look like you like what i'm doing oh i of course i love what you are doing and uh, so many things that, that i never know about my religion and i come to know from you and then i search on my own and i was so surprised especially with that hadith that said that um, like uh, you have to do sins otherwise uh, god will allah will remove us and bring other people who will do the same and then who will repent exactly and then he will so actually i and i shared i'm basically from pakistan and i'm here in usa from 3 and a half years yeah don't give and, uh, don't give too much personal information about yourself okay and then i share this hadith uh, to some of my family uh, who know more than me islam and they like twist and turn oh it doesn't mean that you have to do a sin it's just god wants you to telling you not to do a sin so i said then what is the purpose of telling us that if you will not do the sin then they will remove us he will remove us and he will bring some other people to worship and do sins and uh, so what is the point Oh, oh no 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 it's not like that it's just uh, god is uh, telling that uh, no you don't need to you you will not do the sin but if you do he'll forgive because he's so merciful well what does the merciful have to do uh, with this you know if uh, uh, if allah he is going to bring uh, he he is going to punish us delete us from this earth just because we did not commit sin where is love in that you know she should it should be the opposite He should be. He should be uh, loving us, not hating us, because right. we did what we supposed not to do. But according to Islam, obviously, Allah is a is a is a, is a lonely, sick person. He want people to beg him for forgiveness, and if you are not making sin, then you will not beg for forgiveness. It's like a, it's like it's like somebody you know. Let us say. Uh, 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 once uh, uh, there is a there's a person i know he have a, a rich family but his family they will not they will give him like he have to go and beg for money so they can give him money you know uh, yeah. and then i ask him why your family don't like support you to open like a business or a store or something instead of going and ask them for help from time to time just one time investment and your life can be fixed he said you don't understand They want me to go there so I can beg for it. Mm. They will give him the money, but enough just for now. So tomorrow he will come back again and beg for more money. So this God is a sick God. He don't want people who do, who commit no sin. He yeah, want people who commit sin. Why? Because they are begging for forgiveness. You know, before that we we heard, we listened. You know, in 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 Ramadan, it's all Dorai Quran, um, like uh, the teachers there who explain and all that. But uh, and never point came into my mind. Some some questions I had, especially of Surah Kaf, where okay they asked uh, Muhammad about the questions about uh, three questions and and that he have to answer, but he he couldn't answer of the one question about the ruh and the other yeah. questions that. He answer was actually already exist like oh, everybody knows about the seven sleepers and, uh, and about zulkarnay and so what was the point of giving that answers again to the people who already knew that and um, what, what did not give a correct answer, answer anyway i mean about zulkarnay he he took a story written by an assyrian a syrian author about and, a guy and, he have two horn i mean zulkarnay he became i mean who is this zulkarnay have you ever heard of a guy his name is that guy with a two horn is he a man i didn't <laughs> I didn't know about it before when I heard Robert Christ and the detail about this, yeah. and I was actually curious. I was 
I that question is my mom in uh, in, in my mind from a long time and no Muslim will answer this question and some of the teachers that I know if I'll ask some questions oh they said it it doesn't matter because you're not doing that in your life yeah so everything is, religion, of- everything is religion is wrong I want to ask you you as a as a lady as a married mm-hmm. woman uh, mm-hmm. how, you know like when you see the Quran speaking about if a man he wished to exchange his wife with other wife what what do you yeah. feel about that of course i don't like this point and uh, the husband is like so happy and so okay to know no look i have a permission you don't have a permission i have a permission so i said okay but this hurt it hurt this hurts i will never in my life if i'm in your life as your wife i'll never allow another woman to come in your life but he says oh so but you will not allow but allah allow us right so you so you are you, you know you cannot allow anything anyway he just a throw yeah. you and he exchange it and actually you don't even need to divorce you he can have second one and third one and fourth one and when one of you get older the oldest one he throw her away and he get the new brand new wife so women in Islam is nothing but a property so how you think about your marriage now in the future then because you as long your husband is saying he uh, Allah he allow it so maybe he is thinking to exchange you sooner or later. He's a nice person. He loves me. He's so a nice I person. Don't... Okay, I'm not going to go there then. <laughs> All right. I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. He will. I hope he will not turn to a true to be a true Muslim and decide to follow the Quran. Let us say. Let us hope so. But uh, but Islam is religion. It's allowing that and giving permission for the man to replace the wife as if she is an, an old car. You know, very horrible. So, <clears throat> so uh, Samia, uh, after saying what you are saying, did you decide to leave Islam or not yet? Not yet. I'm not at the point where, but I yes, I'm searching a lot, and I'm discussing a lot with my husband also, and especially Muhammad married to Hazrat Aisha and uh, all that things and. Uh, so uh, he's also curious and then you know it's it's you know it, it feed in our mind that way you don't need to do a question it was Allah's will that happened and that does happen you have to just believe and obey you don't need to ask questions it's like that so uh, yeah it's yeah, weird sometimes even even if we don't ask questions uh, when the Quran like the Quran says in chapter 5 verse 101 ask no questions verse 102 says if you, because former generation they ask the same questions and they, let, they lost their faith so Muhammad he knew that people if they ask questions he have no answers and if he give answers the answers will be horrible and people will lose their faith so Muhammad he knew that he is not convincing his religion is not convincing so we forbid people from asking questions but let us say for the sake of argument I did not ask the questions but other people asking the questions and when those questions hit I forbid myself from asking the questions, but still I hear the questions. So is that is that healthy to run away from the questions and by ignoring them or by you know, refuting them? So the Muslims these days, they try to refute us and each time they try, it come a very horrible way. Allah have hands, uh, the Muslim in the debate, he says, who said so? But other Muslims in YouTube, all of them, they are saying Allah have hands, Allah have, have feet. So the Muslims, in order to 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 refute the questions, they, they they go in denial mood, but they don't really refute. They do mockery of a person who's asking the questions, hoping by doing mockery he will retreat, and we would we are going to bully you. You know the bully uh, culture, we bully the person, and then the person he give up, he stop asking those questions. But those questions are always going to be exist, and nobody can stop them. You mentioned the the ruh. When a, a prophet of God, people ask him about the, the spirit, and then supposedly he received the answer from his God. Okay. And then the answer, <laughs> Allah knows best. <laughs> what kind of answer this answer? Remember, we are asking the one who is connected now and he is receiving revelation from God. We are not asking a scholar or etc. So to avoid to say maybe I don't know. I, I, I'm afraid to give you wrong answer. But this is a prophet who received revelation from his God. And the revelation came to him back to refute that question or to answer that question. Saying what? Say that the, the ruh is from the command of my God. Will we know that is the command from your God? This is what we are asking you. 
<laughs> you know what is what the, what the, what what does it have to do with the question? I'm asking you, what is the spirit? You don't say to me the spirit is from the command of Allah. We are asking you because you claim to be a prophet, and Allah is in charge of that spirit. So we are asking you, what is the spirit anyway? We are not right. asking who is in charge of it. We are asking what is the spirit? When you say spirit, what is that? And he could not. Allah, yeah, go ahead. Allah contradiction about the like about the the Quran says about Angel and Torah that these are the books from me and uh, uh, if you have any kind of doubts in Quran you can go and look at these books and other side it's saying not to believe because uh, it changes and yeah these questions also come in my mind if the Quran is Allah's book and if the Torah and Angel is also Allah's book then why Allah will protect only one book why not the other books too because it's all God's word like a lot of you see, the Muslims, the answer, the answer to this question, just to show you how silly their answers is. I, like I say to them, okay, the, the Quran, chapter 10, verse number 94, it says, if you, Muhammad, have a doubt about what is revealed to you, go and ask the people who they have the books before you, the Christians and the Jews. The Muslims, they say, Christian prince, are you stupid? Don't you no. see it says, if, <laughs> if, Actually, this if here make it more horrible. Why? Because this is God. Don't he knew if he have it or not? I can say, me as a human, because I don't know what is inside your heart. I say to Samia now, if you don't like Islam, leave it. Because I don't know if she like Islam or not. If, right? But this is mm. God. So when God, he says, if you have a doubt, so do Allah knew that Muhammad have a doubt about Islam or not? And if he don't have a doubt, so why he is saying to him, if you have a doubt, that means Allah is being stupid here. Allah is confused. Uh, if Muhammad never have a doubt about Islam, and then Allah, he says to him, if you have a doubt, go and ask the Christians. So this if is a stupid, because the guy, he don't have it, according to Muslims. So do he have it or not? So either he have it, and Allah trying to help him says, go and ask the Christian and the Jews, or he don't have it. And then Allah is a stupid because he is saying to him, or uh, like uh, making an assumption that you have it and he don't uh, but here by saying if that's mean the God himself he do not know if Muhammad have such a thing or not same time regardless if Muhammad he have it or not how the Christian and the Jews their books is corrupt according to Muslims and then the stupid Allah he says to the Muhammad go and ask those who have corrupt book you know what I mean yeah imagine yeah. imagine I say to a Christian if you don't believe that Jesus is God, go and ask Jehovah's Witnesses. But Jehovah's Witnesses are not the Christians. They have a corrupt translation for the Bible. Or I say, if you don't believe in Jesus, go and ask the Mormon. But the Mormon are not the Christians. The book of the Mormon is, has nothing to do with us. So when you say, if you have a doubt, go and ask the one who read the Torah and the one who read the Gospel in the time of Muhammad, which is the same as the one we have now. That's mean that Muhammad, he cannot have a stand of his own religion without us, Christians and Jewish uh, approval. And neither the yeah. Jews, neither the Christians approve Muhammad. Muhammad, he says, if only 10 Jews believe in me, the Jews will believe. So Muhammad, he failed to make 10 Jewish people believe in him. Imagine how horrible it was Muhammad is. He could not make 10 Jews. God bless them friends actually they ask questions and all that and like I was some surprised and I was quite different because I start thinking yes the questions they're asking is right and, and I start digging more into it more into Islam more into Quran and the, more into um, Bible and Torah trying I'm not that much in there but trying but the more I'm digging in more the getting confused and the questions and answers are going against Islam <sighs> watching Al-Fadi Dr. J where I got to know there is no history. Like I'm confused with the Abraham. If there is, and the, the main difference between Bible and uh, Quran is about in 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 Bible it's written that uh, Abraham uh, go and uh, try to sacrifice Isaac, not Ishmael. But the Quran says Ishmael. If this base is wrong and false, from there then that means Islam doesn't exist. Yeah. Well, you know, I hope uh, Samia. If you have any question for me, please tell me. I will be happy to help you. Uh, otherwise, we will see if I can we take another call. And if you like your husband to call me, I will be happy to take him too. Do you have any questions? Um, um, a lot of confusion. 
anyways well that's nice to talk to you maybe i'll come some question at another time and where i would be ready and uh, all right so, i advise you i advise you you see you know islam is not only religion does not make sense it's not even a religion islam is a collection of stupid things you know muhammad he have no religion uh, Muhammad, he, he saw the Jews fasting, he took the Jews fasting. He saw the pagan fasting, he took the pagan fasting. He saw the, the abolition of the of the pagan Sabian, he started doing abolition like them. He saw the, the Arab pagan kissing the black stone, he started kissing the black stone. They saw the Arab going around the Kaaba, he said the, the Kaaba is a station. And then he ignored the Kaaba for many years and he started praying toward Jerusalem. And then when he yeah. could not get Jerusalem, uh, Amr al-Khattab, he said to him, why we don't go back and pray toward the uh, Kaaba? So why why, why you deny the Kaaba in your time if the Kaaba is a, is the most important house for Allah? <laughs> I mean, what's wrong with this guy? So he was trying to convince the Jews that he is a Jew. Muhammad is a fraud. With the Christian, he is a Christian. With the Jews, he is a Jew. With the Sabian, he is a Sabian. With the Arab, he is a pagan like them. So it, it, this guy is like Obama going for election. With the atheist, he make fun of the Bible. With the Jews, he wear a hat and he go pray in the front of the temple. With the Christian, he hold the Bible and he read verses. And with the gays and lesbian, he is a you know he he support them. So Muhammad is not a person who can stand for anything because he have no stand. He was just mm -hmm. desperate trying to make people believe in him, and this is why he promised even the Sabian who worship stars that they will go to heaven. I mean, what is the connection between the Sabian and, and the Jews and the Christian and the Muslims? Uh, uh, if, you, if you go to the book of the Sabian, you will see that the Sabian, they say in their book, if you, they have a book, it's called Kenza Rabba, which means the treasure of the, uh, of, of the God. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it says that the Jews, their God Adonai is the Satan, for he ordered the Jews to do circumcision. So how those who believe that the God of the Jews is Satan for doing circumcision and the Muslims, they follow Muhammad trying to copy the Jews and he do order his followers to do circumcision. So yeah. how he made the Sabian go to heaven when they believe in different God, obviously. Hmm. Right? Right. Yeah. Thank you so much, anyways. Um, and uh, please, I ask everybody out there, pray right. for me and praying right. also. Sure, sure. We will pray for you, sister, and we hope soon you will come to Jesus, and you will see the truth, and the truth will set you free. Thank you so All much. All right. Take care.